many months later. So Okay. I live alone in a pretty standard one-level house with a basement in Michigan. We get snow quite a bit in the wintertime, and I'm used to it. I'm also used to having to shovel my driveway and things like that. On one night last winter, we were getting a huge blizzard. I was glad that I was home and didn't have to go anywhere that night. The snow was supposed to last until about 2 o'clock in the morning. I did have work the next morning, so I was hoping that by the time I would have to leave, the roads would be clear enough. That night, I went to bed, I think at around 11 p.m. The snow was coming down hard, and I could see that there was already at least an inch of snow on the ground. After sleeping, I woke up the next morning and got up to see that everything was covered in snow. I would say we got about six inches total. I didn't have to go to work for another two hours, but I wanted to go outside and shovel the driveway beforehand. My driveway was not too long at all, so it would only take me about 15 to 20 minutes to shovel it. I got on my coat and boots and went outside. As soon as I got out there, I noticed something strange. My garage door was wide open. I had a one-car garage that I parked my car in, and it had a little bit of extra space for storage. I always closed it every night, and this had never happened before. I really didn't know how this was possible. I decided that for some reason- Which means you know how. Obviously, somebody else did that shit. You a cluck ass. I must have forgot to close it the previous day. Nothing appeared to be missing from inside the garage or anything, so that was good. I got my shovel from just inside the garage where I kept it, and then shoveled. When I was done, I put the shovel back, closed the garage. <sighs> Wait a minute. Because we have a garage. But we don't use it because the garage door is broken, so it's like... We never used a garage door. So, when you go in the garage door, there's another door... A regular size door that leads into the house. Don't tell me that there's somebody in his house and he didn't even know because the garage door was open. Like somebody opened that joint and got through the house, got through the door that leads, that goes from the garage to the house. Question For anybody that has garages in their house, do you lock the door? from the garage that leads into the house? Or do you do you only lock the garage, like the outside of like the, like the car, like the, I don't know how to explain. All right, so you got the garage, right? So on the outside of the garage, that's the door, right? Like, that's, like, that's the outside to get into the garage. That's the door, that's that door. Then you got the garage. Then on the other side is that, the door that leads into the house. Do y'all lock the outside of the of the garage um, like that? Or do you only lock the door that leads, that goes from the house, that goes from the garage to the, to the, to the inside? I don't know. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Went back inside. Later on, it was time for me to leave for work. I went back into my garage and got in my car. When I was inside, I started the engine, and then I noticed that there was a man in the back seat of my car. Oh my god! There was some guy that I had never seen before. He was wearing a Mother Clucker just chilling in the back part of his car. Oh my god! You know how scary that shit is? You think you're alone in your car. Then out of nowhere, you, you hear or you see somebody say, hey. It did. I'm, I'm, I'm passing out. I'm passing out on, on, well, I'm passing out either on the, the moment you say, hey, or the moment I see you. I'm passing out. I'm, yeah. yeah. Coat, a winter hat, and had a short beard. The guy looked right at me in the rear view mirror. I did the only thing I could think of, which was to exit the vehicle and run back inside. Thankfully, I had remembered to take the keys out of the ignition with me. After making it back inside, I was sure to lock all of my doors. My garage was connected to my house, and I heard the knob on the door start to turn very shortly after I had locked it. After that, I heard my large garage door opening. 
I called the police as I watched the man walk through the snow down my driveway and then walk down the street. At this point, I was just happy that he was leaving. The police arrived a while later, and the man was long gone by then, but I could give them a decent description of him. I went to work after that, and I never did hear if the police were able to find the guy. One thing that the police noticed that I hadn't was that there were marks on my door leading from my garage to my house. The marks looked as though the guy had been trying to get in. He must have done that during the night while I was sleeping. It really creeped me out when I realized that. I still don't know how he got into my garage in the first place, though. Maybe I did leave it open, or maybe he was able to open it somehow. Either way, I'm just happy he never got inside my house. I'm not going to rule that part out, though. This story happened just about a week ago, and it's still very fresh in my mind. It was nighttime, and I was driving home from work, and we were getting a blizzard. I live in the northeast, and even though we get lots of snow, I always hate driving in it. The roads can become very slippery and dangerous to drive on, and you have to drive very slow. So I was driving well below the speed limit as I made my way back home from work, which usually only took me about 10 minutes. Make it Today, though, it took me probably 20 and the visibility was not very good either. The snow was still coming down pretty heavy, and the roads were very quiet because most people probably realized how bad of an idea it would be to drive in these conditions. As I was about halfway home, I saw that a car was coming up on me quick from behind. I'm not sure where it came from exactly, but soon it was right behind me. It made me nervous because it seemed to be driving dangerously fast and close to me in this weather. It did not try to pass me though, it just tailed me. As I made the slow drive home, the car behind me stayed in my rear. This continued all the way until I... Question. Because this... I, I be, I be experiencing this. When you, when you driving, right? And you driving on the road, highway, back roads, anything, right? You just driving. And you see somebody haul ass in from your rear view mirror or from your side mirrors from behind you. And they, but they're in the same lane as you. If you can, do you get over? Or do you wait and hope that they uh, that they get over? I think I would get over myself. Just because, like, I don't want to, I don't. Like what if what if they out to do some cluck shit, and they want to hit they want to hit somebody on purpose? I think uh, I would just move out the way just in case. Like what if you don't want to stop? What if you don't want to get over? Huh? Into my street, and when I did, the car behind me turned as well. This was suspicious. Now, of course, I hadn't seen the car very well with all the snow, so I guess it could have been a neighbor. Eventually, I made it to my house, and I pulled into my driveway. When I did, the car behind me pulled in. Now I was really concerned. Okay. Who was this? And why did they follow me all the way home? I parked my car and waited for a minute to see if whoever was in the car behind me would get out. They didn't, though, and remained inside the car. Man, I... I was trying to get a look at who was inside, but their car was a ways down the driveway at the far end of it, and I was parked close near my house where I always did. It was still snowing a lot, so I really couldn't see anything. I considered getting out and asking what they wanted, okay. but I was just concerned whoever it was would be dangerous. Stop, stop. After all, they followed me all the way to my house in a blizzard. I figured that it would just be best to go inside my house. What was you doing in that situation? In that situation right now, they followed you all the way home. What would you do? I waited for about another minute inside my car and then opened my door and walked to my house. I was worried whoever was in the car behind me would get out and chase after me or something like that, so I moved quickly, but when I made it inside and shut the door, I looked back and saw that whoever was out there was still inside their car. They remained at the back of my driveway and their engine was still running. I watched from the window for a good five minutes straight. They just stayed there and nothing changed. It was concerning, but I wasn't quite sure what to do. I really didn't want to go out and ask them what they wanted, but I also didn't think that it was worth calling the police or anything like that. It was what? getting late, and I was what? tired and wanted to go to bed, but didn't feel comfortable doing so with the car there. I got ready for bed anyways, but several times looked back to the window to see if the car was still there. This was causing me to stay up later than I wanted to. 
Finally, about an hour later, I watched the car back out of my driveway and then drive away. I was so happy to see it. The snow was still coming down pretty heavy at this point, but I now felt completely safe at home. I went to bed. That's cat. That's cat. Somebody followed you home and waited in your driveway what it seemed like for hours. And then they just leave. And you say you feel completely safe? That's cap. That's cap. Because you don't know who these people are and they know where you live. Who's to say that you're not going to come back with a gang of motherfuckers? After that, and the next morning, I woke up and made a cup of coffee. As I was drinking my morning coffee, I looked outside. It was now sunny, and all of the snow had passed through. However, there was a large amount on the ground. My car was covered in snow, even after I had gotten home late the night before. As I looked outside, it took me a while, but I saw something odd. Most of the yard and driveway were covered in a smooth layer of fresh snow, but then I saw some footprints. They were not mine from the night before, though. These were much more recent than that. Then, I saw where they were coming from. I went outside to investigate further. I saw that there were footprints heading all the way from the back of my driveway, and there were also some tire tracks at the back of my driveway as well. They were both relatively fresh, and the footprints started near the back of the driveway and went up to the front door of my house. Then, it went into the front yard next to my house and around to the side. After going around to the side of the house, I followed the footprints even further to the back, and they stopped right at my bedroom window. When I saw this, I was horrified. Whoever had followed me last night must have come back later and walked all the way to my bedroom window. So many things about this creeped me out and still creep me out. This wasn't very long ago at all. Since it happened, I haven't seen the car or noticed anything strange, and I'm hoping it stays that way. Back when I was in school, I always loved when it snowed a lot, because that meant we might get a snow day. Any chance to stay home from school was nice, and I also enjoyed going out and sledding or snowboarding at nearby hills. Well, one time when I was in high school, we got a bunch of snow for like two days straight. It started in the middle of the day on Thursday. When I got home from school, we already had a few inches of snow on the ground. It continued that day into the night and basically lasted all night long. When I woke up the next morning on Friday, my mom told me that school had been canceled and we were having a snow day. I was really happy to hear this news, and I was able to sleep in for a few more hours. I finally got up at about 9 a.m. It felt so nice to get the extra sleep, and I had some breakfast before going out to shovel the driveway. This is something that I always had to do. It was kind of a chore of mine. I remember that we had a snowblower one year, but it broke, so we went back to shoveling. Our driveway was pretty average, and it didn't take me too long to finish it. When I was almost done, I saw a guy walking down our snow-covered street in my direction. I did not recognize him, but obviously he must be a neighbor because I didn't see any car nearby. Our neighborhood was pretty large and, for the most part, average. The yard sizes and house sizes were not very big or small, and there were several blocks of houses all in a row. The man walked right up to me as I was finishing shoveling my driveway. He waved and said hi to me, and I did the same. All right. He told me that he was my neighbor, and his name was Dane. Okay. He was wearing a red coat, a gray winter hat, and black winter gloves. So? I also noticed that he had a sling over his left arm. Oh, what? He asked me if I had a snow day, and I told him yes. Dave then said that he saw me shoveling and wondered if I would mind shoveling his driveway, too. Oh, no! He explained that he recently hurt his arm and couldn't shovel because of it. I thought about it for a minute. I didn't know this guy or where he lived, and I also didn't know how long his driveway was. Plus, shoveling wasn't something I especially enjoyed doing. But at the same time, it would be a nice thing to do. As I was thinking about what to say back to Dave as a response, he broke the silence saying that he would pay me $20. This sounded good to me, and I said yes. Dave told me to follow him, and we walked down the street to the end of it. We then walked about another two blocks, which surprised me how far away this guy seemed to live. I was wondering why he went this far away to ask me to shovel his driveway. Where are your people then? Finally, we arrived at his house. I could see that his driveway was covered in snow, but it wasn't very long, even shorter than mine. This was a good sign. Dave told me that I could use his shovel, and it was just inside his garage. Okay. He said he would also pay me now before he forgets, and I followed him to his garage. We didn't go through the large garage door that a car would, but instead, we went through a smaller one on the side. When I first saw it inside the garage, I could see that it was completely empty. No shovels, no car, no nothing. I stopped at the doorway. Dave was several steps ahead of me, and then stopped when he realized I wasn't following him anymore. 
He turned around and faced me, then smiled. Come on in, he said. I'm good. I just kept standing there. That's right. Dave then slowly took the sling off of his arm and threw it to the ground, then waved at me with the arm that had been in the sling. His tone then changed, and he said, Get in here now. Oh, God. I backed up a few steps, and Dave started walking towards me. When he did, I turned around and started running as fast as I could back home. I ran through his front yard that was filled with snow and nearly slipped when I got back out onto the street. Dave followed me to the end of his front yard, but then stopped, and I was able to make it back home safely. I told my mom all about it when I got back, and we drove over there, but when we did, my mom said she knew that house, and the owners didn't live there during the winter. Obviously, the guy was gone, and there wasn't much information that we would know about him. This was so creepy, and I didn't shovel the driveway for a long time after that. I already hate shoveling. Why the hell would I do it for you? I don't even know you. Now you got all that. I like snow. I'm about to say snow. I like snow as much as the next person, but some of people, you can only take so much, you know? And if I see somebody, you know, just out in the, in the cold, like the blizzard, and I see them shaking, and I sh and I see them, you know, shivering their asses off. Oh. You know what I mean? I, I I see them got like frostbite or hypothermia or anything like that. I see that they need help bad. I'm gonna look. Them, I'm gonna look at them dead in their eyes and say, "Tough." Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you, stay happy. <laughs> my, my family.